Curtis, the well-known gopper, had a couple gopping friends, and when they came to New Bern, they would play to win a skin. All of the classic sponsors come to see his friends play well. They never let poor Curtis play enough to ring their bell. Then one sunny afternoon, Curtis came to say, Shaw, with your game so right, won't you be my partner tonight? The Shriners Hospital for Crippled Children. What does this mean, you may ask? The first hospital was built back in 1922. Who would have known at that time that it would become an international hospital? Since this time, the hospitals have exceeded two and a half billion dollars in operating expenses. This miracle has become a wellspring for children everywhere. My father was, was a Shriner also, and he, uh, so I, you know, instantly remember the things that they did uh, in our community. Uh, they've helped uh, all kinds of disadvantaged youth, whether it be handicapped or whether it be uh, some abnormality or, or whatever. To date, there are 21 hospitals in all. The Greenville, South Carolina branch serves six states and 18 shrine temples, providing services for pediatric deformities, injuries, joint and muscle disorders, and burns. If you can just leave some place with, uh, you know, leaving a little bit of uh, hope or a little bit of happiness or just see a smile on the face. You know, if it's a golf ball or sign in their hat or, you know, whatever. Raising money for a, a you know, a hospital or, or a certain charity that needs help. You know, that's, that's the good part. That sinks down in your heart. The Shriners Hospitals for Crippled Children is the only system that truly meets the definition of charitable, not-for-profit organization. The hospital provides medical care free of charge for patients who have not yet reached their 18th birthday. No federal, state, or insurance monies are accepted. 96% of the hospital's budget goes for patient care and for research. As we always say, if we help one, one uh, child a day, then we've done our job. So uh, we have a lot of fun. We have another great field here in these three characters, and uh, I'm proud to introduce them. From East Tennessee University, Mike Holbert. Probably the greatest, one of my greatest golfers and, and who I always idolized was Jack Nicklaus, of course, when I was, the only reason why, I mean, one of the reasons why, was no matter how he was playing, it seemed like he made a putt on the last hole, and it didn't matter where it was. If he needed to make it, or even if he did need to make it, he made it, so. Um, with, you know, I always liked Tom Weiss golf. I loved the way he played. So he was sort of between about the ages of 15 and 18. He was my, you know, he was my sort of role model. And then, you know, then it was someone else, and then it was someone else, someone else. But but no one, one particular person. I probably think like like everyone else, I was inspired by Arnold Palmer when I went to I went to see my first professional golf tournament at the Texas Open in San Antonio uh, in 1963, and Arnold Palmer uh, had won the previous two Texas Opens, and he won this third one. Uh, and uh, there were a lot of players there at that time, but uh, uh, Arnold Palmer probably it got me excited uh, playing in the game. But then uh, around Texas, I had I had met Jimmy Demerit, and uh, he was a friend of my father's, and uh, he was a, a marvelous human being, a lot of fun to be with, and uh, uh, so. You know, I got to I, I got to be around a few people like that, but uh, that got me excited to 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 think about playing professional golf someday or playing golf anyway. The Curtis Strange Shrine Classic began in 1990. A couple of amateurs, Jason Widener and Mike Goodis, joined Jay Hotz and Curtis Strange. Since then, Curtis has had 20 touring professionals joining him in skins matches to raise money for the Shriners Crippled Children's Hospital. The largest amount raised in a single year was in 1995 when Fred Couples joined Curtis, bringing $120,000 to the needs of the children. 
altogether. The Classic has raised $820,000. Your host for the ninth Shrine Classic, Curtis Strange, winner of two back-to-back -back U.S. Open titles. I guess I got to go back to you know my parents who started me in the game, and my dad who was a golf pro that you know took me to and from the golf course all the time, and and, and I basically grew up on the golf course and and would go at seven in the morning, come back at seven at night every every day long every day during the summer for three or four years and um, you know that that kind of got me started and you know he was a very good player and and uh, a good swinger of the golf club that I always try to emulate and and um, uh, that's it you know growing up and watching I think guess TV was so big back then watching Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicklaus and you know um, uh, Sam Snead and those guys play all the time I just you know just I loved it the 1998 Classic paired a couple of veterans against a couple of hungry, not-so-veterans. It was announced Curtis and Ben playing as a team, and although it looked good on paper... Well, Curtis called me yesterday morning, and uh, he said something like, uh, when was the last time you played? I said, well, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. The other twosome, of course, Frank Nabolo and Mike Holbert. I thought maybe Curtis might uh, fit me as a partner, but... You're not upset about that, aren't you? No. See, that's <laughs> no. But then they, right now. Mike, the bottom wins, Lon, is it's my day and I get to pick who I want. <laughs> and he has, you know, I love you and everything, but I like two green jackets. I'm still, I just want to tug right up against one of them, you know? I'm still wearing a navy blue and I'm trying to get some of that green on it. <laughs> well, uh, Hubby and I both flew up from Florida yesterday, so we've been practicing all weekend. So, Hubby's swinging great, hasn't missed a shot in two days, so <laughs> we're ready. <laughs> and so, the match was decided and the stage was set.
so many people can benefit from the game of golf and they don't even have to be playing. In 1989, Curtis Strange decided he wanted to return something to the less fortunate by creating a tournament that raised money for the Shriners Children's Hospitals. It's called the Curtis Strange Warehouser Shrine Classic and this year it featured a skins format with four of the PGA Tour's best. Two-time U.S. Open champion Curtis Strange was one of the big four and thanks to him they've raised overall almost a million dollars for the Shriners Hospitals. The biggest winners are the many crippled children in the hospitals. It's a very noble cause. Strange's playing partner was two-time Masters champion Ben Crenshaw. They teamed against two-time Sarah's and World Open champ Frank Nabilo and three-time PGA Tour winner Mike Holbert. The crowds came out in great numbers to watch these fellas at work and they gave him the show. On the par 4 16th hole, Mike Herbal had, Holbert had a birdie chance for a $10,000 carryover. He canned it and it gave he and Nabilo $14,000 in skins cash. Ben Crenshaw on the par 5 17th, his third shot. They had a thousand and they scored to 2,500. We all know that we come in here for the kids and thanks to all the sponsors and all the people who come out and watch today and pay their hard earned money to uh, to help the kids. And again, as we always say, if we help one, one uh, child a day, then we've done our job.